Hi, I'm Anthony Fury in for Ezra. Thanks for watching us. When it comes to Calgary City Councillor Sean Chu's tweet on climate change, the punishment just does not fit the crime. Time to dig deeper in this social mania story. On January 4th, Mr. Chu, who unless you live in Calgary, I imagine you have never heard of him before, tweeted, so quiet from global warming alarmists about the ice stuck ship and YYC weather, it's deafening. Is it because the weather's been so freaking cold? He's referring to climate change researchers stranded in the Antarctic due to extreme cold and the very cold weather in Calgary. People hit the roof in response to this all across Canada. People were reacting with outrage on social media, felt his tweet didn't acknowledge a number of things, which of course it didn't because it was just a tweet and not an essay or a doctoral thesis. Here's Alberta NDP MLA candidate Tom Moffat. Well, I see in the news, Sean has not done his research on climate change, not warming, and is a danger to our children's future. Well, well, Mr. Moffat, if you put it that way, I mean, if he's a danger to the future of children, maybe it's okay to lock him up for his views or implement some punitive measure. Darcy Norman, another online user, wrote, hey, I'm not denying that gravity exists. I'm just saying there's two sides to the story. I want to see everything. He's been a little tongue in cheek, suggesting that Chu's views are akin to saying the earth is flat. Calgary Mayor Nahid Nenshi even chastised his own council colleague with a simple one word, wow, of oh, such gravitas. But then he did add, have they also spoken about the killer heat wave in Argentina? That's just called seasons. Believe it or not, several mainstream media outlets even wrote stories about this guy's tweet. A CBC story said many people thought Chu was sticking to a standard right-wing talking point. Those are their words. Ooh, how villainous. Folks, what's really going on here? Why is a rookie counselor with just over 700 Twitter followers, and that's the count Monday morning after he became a source of national angst, why is he being so publicly chastised for a, a simple little send-off? It's almost as if making a, making a simple little comment about climate change is the new, uh, is the new drawing a Mohammed cartoon. You're just, you're just doing something on your own. It's not really hurting anyone. And then suddenly a nationwide lynch mob is out to destroy you. Why? They're trying to make an example out of him, folks, and to frighten anyone else who might be thinking along the same lines. One of the tweets quoted in that CBC story was a man named Chris Turner, writes, nailed it. You're quite the scientician. Chuckle, chuckle, get it? Use the fake word scientitious scientician to prove, oh, that Chu, he's really stupid. Ha ha. Okay, folks, but Turner is not just a regular guy. He writes books and essays from the climate change alarmist perspective. He's signed with major speakers bureaus to talk on these matters. Nothing wrong with that. But I just want to show to you that he makes money off of his climate change views and defending them. CBC didn't mention this fact, of course. So if Chu gets more on his agenda, well, that doesn't help these people's Bottom lines, last week on this program, I discussed how some scientists think meat needs to be taxed to the point where people stop buying it as a way of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. I didn't like this because I thought it would harm the regular folks. Now, one person wrote to me mocking me, denigrating my employer and so forth. So I clicked on his website and I realized he ran a for-profit company to do with such big government regulations. Now look, I, I'm personally an agnostic on the various and viral issues. There's a fact war raging out there. Us regular folks don't know what to believe and we're pulled one way, then another. I do believe the next generation of billionaires will come from some sort of green transit energy revolution based on private sector investment and a free market and the supply and demand of the consumer. I, I, mean, I mean, who wouldn't prefer to charge their car by plugging it into a wall socket and having it only cost, you know, I don't know, 50 cents. But in the meantime, before the free market allows that stuff, do we need sweeping government regulation and projects that don't do anything except limit our liberties and take money from the regular folks? U.S. taxpayers lost $850 million in a handout to green energy company Solyndra. Former Ontario Premier Dalton McGuinty's green agenda harmed the work in Joe via eco fees. Massively rising energy costs a $7 billion sole source deal to Samsung. Should we, and here, here, here's the question that we're getting at, should we completely re-engineer our society based on what some scientists are saying right now? 
Like how in 2008, for instance, NASA scientists argued the Arctic could be ice-free, no more ice, by the summer of 2013. Ooh, didn't happen. Sean Chu, folks, that counselor did not say he wants to uh, introduce slavery to Canada or uh, repeal women from being able to vote, which might justifiably cause some outrage from some corners. He just seemed to hold a view on a matter that's very hotly debated in public discourse. A lot of people didn't like his view. That's fine. That's the public square. The Calgary Herald story, though, gives us a little clue as to what's going on here. Quote, much of Calgary municipal policy is based on the reality of climate change. From waste management plans and energy efficient building practices to city-wide urban planning. Okay. So in other words, Chu should not be allowed to question the direction of Calgary policy? But wasn't that just what he was elected to do? Look, folks, maybe Sean Chu's in the right, maybe he's in the wrong. I don't know. I don't really care. We'll probably find out for certain in about um, 3,000 years. But if people are so confident in their views, the people who have a religious devotion to certain angles of climate change, the people who make good money profiting off of this issue, well, you'd think they wouldn't lose their marbles just because of one vaguely dissenting voice. We take environmental sustainability seriously. We believe in long-term clean energy usage and we believe in environmentally sustainable economic growth. I'm joined now by Calgary radio host, broadcaster, columnist Dave Rutherford. Dave, thanks so much for stopping by and joining us. I mean, I, I, I've got to ask, do you agree with that bottom line assessment that I just don't think the punishment, the outrage fits what we're seeing here? There's something else going on. Well, Anthony, you're right about that. Um, I, I'm wondering, though, as you said, you know, one sort of one councillor in one Canadian city said one thing. By the way, he didn't say climate change. He said global warming. And I do think there's a distinct difference in the in the narrative when you use those different words. He said global warming, not climate change. I mean, we we all know the climate changes. We've had ice ages, you know, climate changes. We get that. But whether or not uh, man is driving global warming is the question. So he said global warming, not climate change. But Does the nitpicking it, it, matter? Is the nitpicking well, oh, the salient absolutely. point here that we need to well, write, CBC needs to write a national story that everyone gets outraged for, oh, for a rookie no, no, council? No, I, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. But I just want to make clear. I don't clear want to talk the, about the, the science the, here. The, like the, I said, I'm agnostic on this. Oh. Well, I mean, the science has never settled. You mentioned the Calgary Herald story. It also said in that story, the consensus is, the science is settled. Editorially, the Herald, I guess, has taken the point that the science is settled. Clearly, it's not settled. Uh, and I think that's the thin skin of some of those environmental radicals you talked about who may want to profit from this. They don't want to hear anything. They, they know that there is a growing body of suspicion about the science being settled. It clearly isn't. So, any time there's any conversation about this, any conversation, they want to stop it instantly. I mean, obviously, science um, never stops. We've seen, you know, Antarctica. We, we laugh about that, that ironic story about the scientists being trapped in the growing ice as they studied ice that was supposed to be diminishing. We've got new research going on in Antarctica all the time uh, to prove, in fact, that ice is not melting at these catastrophic rates. Science continues. I mean, there's some science underway now studying uh, pulsars in space to see whether or not Einstein's theory of relativity is correct or not. I mean, it goes on and on. It's never settled. So Dave, I, I want to talk to you, though, about from, from the taxpayer angle. I know Calgary yep. was recently talking about getting into the Bixie bike program. I think the voting is yep. kind oh, of put on yeah. hold. And at the end of the day, it's the same sort of thing. The prism of, well, it's, this is good for the environment. Therefore, if there's a hundred million, ten million dollar deficit that we got to ding the taxpayer be for, so be it. It's all allowed under this well, self-righteousness. In the last election, there was a shift in the power balance on Calgary Council. It was very lefty, very granola for a long time. We had a couple of conservatives, including Sean Chu, elected. And so we have a more even balance going on. So some of these things uh, that were accepted as uh, commonplace, you know, closing down streets for, for big uh, environmental festivals, and as you say, creating bike lanes and bike-friendly everything these days, uh, may be challenged a little bit more. But 
There's also more to this, I think. It all comes down to politics. You talked about the mayor commenting on this. I mean, Sean Chu knocked off one of the mayor's buddies in the last election. And so, uh, you know, the head Nenshi uh, has a long memory. Yeah, he's an aw shucks purple professor, but really, he's a pretty, uh, pretty tough politician. And so uh, I think there's some local politics involved in this too. But, but you're right about the uh, cacophony of noise whenever anybody challenges the so-called settled science. Anthony, you and I know it's not settled. The environmentalists know it's not settled. And more and more we're hearing science finding out how fantastic this planet is and uh, nothing is settled. Dave, I'm really glad you gave me that local municipal perspective there because I knew there's something going on here that isn't oh, yeah. quite right. Dave Rutherford, thanks so much for stopping by.